Okay, welcome back. Hope you have had a nice break. Are there any questions? Anything? All right. So we are okay. going to start a um, new textbook. Uh, if you go to the, the link for the textbook, um, is provided in the course outline. I also set out the announcement, but there's a single way to find the textbook. For me, I just type in um, forecast, practice, principle, and practice two. I just type in those keywords. The first item is the textbook. Okay, so FPP2. Uh, I just want to express my sincere thanks to the authors um, who wrote this textbook, especially make it public available at no cost, okay? So just appreciate my appreciate, express my appreciations for the free available textbook. We only cover two chapters, chapter nine, dynamic regression models, and chapter 11, advanced forecasting methods. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, how many of you installed R and R Studio on your computer? If you installed typing number one in the chart area, if you uh, haven't installed typing zero, so can I get some response? If you installed R and R Studio, type in one, just number one. If not, type in zero. Thank you so much for those responses. Most already installed. Okay, great. Um, if you installed, you can follow my examples. Uh, I posted my PowerPoint slide uh, um, I don't use OneNote because when I use OneNote, I cannot copy and paste the command into the R Studio, okay? Uh, so that's the reason. Uh, if you want to follow my step, you just copy the command from the PowerPoint slide into the R Studio. You will get the result. I will show you how to do it, okay? Um, so this is our starting point. Uh, we are start by introducing the white no noise. Uh, what is white noise? It is just a terminology. It is just a label. If you have a data, there is no auto correlation. That is the white noise. No auto correlation for time series data. Okay. Um, so let's open my R. If you want, I give you a few moments to launch your R Studio. So if you using R Studio, this is the layout you are going to um, have. Most often, I will use just the bottom left corner. So I will just make it bigger by click this button. Okay, not this one. Sorry, Professor, just a quick question. Did you say that we don't know how to, we, or sorry, we don't have to know how to use R, but we must know how to use, to look at the outputs for the final exam? Yes, Matthew, that's correct. Because okay. we only have two weeks. Uh, yeah. I know you are struggling with many courses, family responsibilities, part-time jobs, et cetera, et cetera. No requirement for how to use R, but there is requirement how to explain the output from R, as well as the terminology, not actual operations on R. That's correct. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. We thank appreciate you, Matthew, your... for asking that. Yeah, it's just two weeks, right? Especially in the last two weeks. Um. Uh, so I try to go slow. So, uh, make sure when you use R each time when you launch R, you have to type in library. So, for example, this is my command mode. So you have to type in, I already installed, but on safe side, just show you, you type in library and then FPP2. You have to issue this command. Okay, I already issued, so I'm going to uh, just show you, but I will not run it to save some space. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so let's do some exercise. Let's create some random number um, that uh, have uh, related to the white nodes. Create some number that data represent white nodes. So first step, you select the seed. So if you have my PowerPoint slide, you just highlight, copy, uh, because this is very, you can just copy. I just want to show you copy and paste, control C, copy, and then go to this command, control V, paste. Okay. Or you can manually type in set dot seed 30. After that, we create a time series data. TS represent time series data. Okay, we are going to create 50 of them. Okay, using the seed, and the result of those time series data, I put in variable y. Okay. So again, I'm going to just copy this to save you some typing time. Control C. And then go to this command, Control V. Press Enter. So I have a, a variable y has a 50 random number. It is time series data. And then, I will plot the variable y, okay, and give this chart a title. So I'm going to just copy this, control C, go to my command, control V, then press enter key. And now you see the chart here. I pause for a moment to see if you have questions. So this is white nose. Okay, this is the time series data has no auto correlation, has no auto correlation. Okay. Um, and if you want to create ACF, just type in this one, GGACF, uh, the command in R is case sensitive. See, this is capital A. Okay, so because this is a very short command, I'll just type in. Uh, GG ACF for variable Y. Okay. And you see this uh, auto correlation graph. You see this graph, they're all within the upper and lower limit. That means there is no auto correlation, no spike. See, this is upper limit. Upper limit, this is the lower limit. Okay, uh, hope this shows you a simple command in R. Just copy and paste. This is the reason I use PowerPoint, not use the OneNote. Okay, uh, Daniel, you have questions? Hi, uh, hi, Professor. Yeah, it's Dominic. I have a question. Uh, yes. Yeah, so when I was doing this in R Studio, when I use the second and third functions, um, it keeps saying error in um, R norm 50. It says could not find the R norm function. Um, okay, sorry. So you can you do this, type in this library bracket FPPT2, the one I highlighted here. Okay. You type in this into your command line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then repeat the, the command I said here. 
Okay. FPP2, okay. Type in this one, library bracket FPP2, closing bracket. Okay. Did it work? Um, it says there's an error in finding the library, but I mean, okay. I don't if know. that is the case, try this, Dan. Try this. So you have this window, right? Can you click the package packages? Um. Can you click this packages? Yeah, it's just. Mine doesn't actually have that one. It's, uh, it says it's updating it right now. Maybe you can come on and we, you can move on in your lecture and come back to me. Oh, thank you so there. much. Yeah, thank you for being so considerate to the whole class. Um, so this is the white, where is my slide? Not this one, this one here. Uh, this is the white nose. Okay, overall introduction in chapter nine in our second textbook. Remember in our first text, textbook, um, unfortunately I cannot type. In our first textbook, but I just want to make some annotation. Okay, I'll write down something here. From chapter one to chapter uh, eight, we have variable X, we have variable Y, and we may have several variables, X1, X2, et cetera. Then we have one Y, okay? And in chapter nine, in our first textbook, when we do the arima, we do not have X, we just have Y. We do not have X in a RIMA model. Okay. Ignore my typing here. Okay. So what we are going to do in our second textbook, we are going to extend a RIMA. Extend a RIMA to include X so that we have we have y, or we have maybe several x, x1, x2, et cetera, and y. That is the idea in our second textbook, chapter nine. Everyone clear? Okay, so chapter nine in second textbook is the extension of chapter nine in first textbook. The extension means include x include X, okay? Um, because it is include X, see, this model, uh, this model Y, we allow to include, include X1, X2 until XK. And there is a, an error term we call white noise, okay? Um, this is a um, normal multiple regression. But because we are going to use a rima, so the note, we change the notation. Instead of a epsilon t here, we use eta t. We use eta t. And what is eta t? You can ignore this notation here. This is the backward notation. This, uh, uh, maybe I need to explain this capital B here. Remember in our first textbook, when we say yt, we know what it is mean, okay? The value at t period. And we know yt minus one, the value at t minus one. And the relationship between yt and yt minus one is that 
why t minus one is a um, one number before y t, one value before y t, because it is before y t. So we take the fourth letter b. Okay. So in our second book, this y t they call b, then y t means before y t. So I hope you understand this letter B. Before Y T means Y T minus Y. That is the uh, back notation, capital B represents. But I would suggest you can ignore this one, the capital B, but you need to understand what is Ips, eta T. Eta T, I'll write a note here, the E, how to see the multiple windows. So eta t, you can refer to here. What way is my mouse? Eta t have something with the value before it, eta t minus one, and then white noise, epsilon t, and also Epsilon t minus one, epsilon t minus two. So that is the epsilon t, uh, eta t. And the epsilon t, it is just a y north. It is um, normally distributed independently with mean is zero. Standard deviation, it, it is a number. This is just an example. What eta t looks like, it will looks like this. Eta t will looks like this, okay? And y t will looks like this. Y t have x and also have eta t. Okay. So this is the extension a Rima model to include x because we allow to include x, we use eta t represent the, the error term for the ARIMA part. Okay. All right, so next, there are several sections. Section one is about the estimation, estimation. Um, I hope you can just read over this by yourself. It is easy read, okay? Our uh, focus on the R technical part, it's explained the output from the R. Please read this by yourself, okay? Um, that is session one. Now session two, uh, talk about the regression with ARIMA errors in R, with ARIMA errors in R. And this, we are going to use a data, the data called US change. If you want to know what this data include, Okay, you go to, you copy, you just type in this command or copy and paste. Copy this view, control C. I have copy button, copy. Okay, copy and go back to your R studio. Control V. So you want to take a look at US change. This is the data, press enter key. See, this is the US change, the data. It has consumption, income, production, savings, unemployment for different years. Okay, so this is what this data is about. You scroll down total, how many observations? Uh, because I randomly click this one. So if I click this, it is sorted here. So how many total observations? We have many, many data here. A hundred, scroll down. 187 observations. Each observation has consumption, income, production, savings, unemployment. That is this data about. This data, is a part of the package FPP2. That's the reason when you first start, 
you have to go to the package, go to the install, and then uh, type in FPP2 here. FPP2 two, two. Okay. It is somewhere I sent you the message. I want to show you the references here to start with the R Studio. Get um, See under the install in R Studio under package tab, click install packages, and then install package, then type in FPP2. And ensure install dependencies is checked. Okay, so install package first. After that, each time when you use R, you will type in uh, library FPP2. So two steps. The first step you just install once. Where do you install? Go to here, packages. Then install, you then type in FPP2. Two. I already installed, so I will not quick install, I will quick cancel. And make sure you have installed dependencies here. Okay, so that is the install packages. And all the data in the second textbook inside this package, FPP2. Okay. So after that, here you have to type in library. L-I-B-R-A-R-Y, and then FPP2. Each time you use R, you have to type in here. Okay, so. Okay, okay we viewed the, we know what is the US change data. Okay, so what we are trying to do, we try to take a look at uh, the sequence chart for consumption, remember? And the sequence chart for income, we have consumption here. We have income. Oh, sorry. And how do we create a chart? Yes, questions? Sorry, just one quick question. Um, so I did all of that and it's starting to work, but when I do auto plot plus GG title, it's giving me um, error in auto plot. Why could not find function auto plot? Um, did you do this to say it is correct view US change? Do I just type that in to the console? Like, yeah, the, okay, the command, yeah, to the console here. Okay, one moment, yeah. And after you type in view, um. US change, do you have this data? Nope. Nope. Um, no, then you go, can you see my, go to the packages here, packages. Yes, I see the packages. Go to install, install. Okay. Install. Under the packages, type in FPP, Two. I, I I already installed it. Did you make sure there is a check mark beside install dependencies? Sorry? You see my computer install dependencies. Yes, in it's it's, check, it's marked. Okay, so you already installed. Okay, yeah. do this. Under the command line, type in library, L-I-B-R-A-R-Y, opening bracket, FPP2. Closing bracket, do this, press enter key. Library FPP2, case sensitive. Mm. Um, it said it failed for FPP2 for some mm. reason. It's okay, you, sh you should just continue the lecture, same thing, I'll, I'll figure it out later. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just wonder 
concern about insect number one in chart area, if you can, if you have no problem with using R, concern about in typing number one. Okay, Katie, thank you so much. Anybody else, you, you do not have problem with R, you can use R, follow my step. Okay, uh, looks like, uh, I'm trouble. Yeah, so um, okay. Um, some students have trouble, some students can use it. Um, uh, I'm very sorry for students having the trouble. Yeah. Um, if I were you, I may restart the computer. Sometimes it work, restart and then install the package. Even though you already installed, install the package. And then in the command line here, uh, type in library FPP2. Okay. Uh, for students who are successfully uh, using the R, do you have suggestions why some students have trouble? Do you have some tips from your experience? Why some students have uh, the problem you have uh, just to give a moment to see if we can troubleshooting to get together the problem together. Okay, if not, um, I will just continue the lecture. Um, maybe we can fix the problem. Maybe we can fix the problem later on. Okay. Maybe the packages are not installed. Ali, thank you so much. That's the reason I suggest for those students have trouble, restart your computer, reinstall the packages, and then type in library FPP2. Okay, okay let's move on. Okay. Um, so next, I want to create a sequence chart for consumption and for income. Okay. And um, how do I create a sequence chart? Put them into one, you, you just copy and paste this command. So see, oops, oops. This is the reason I test this PowerPoint before I give this lecture. I read, I copy and paste, make sure it work. So see, you select this, right click your mouse. Uh, there is no copy, then you press Control C. And then, um, go to here, control V, and then press enter key. You see, you got this graph here, you got this graph. Okay, consumption and income. Okay. So this is um, this one. Um, next one, we want to fit uh, the model. So remember, we are allowed to include X. Okay. Uh, so our X will be income. Income is our X. Consumption is our Y. So Y consumption have something to do with the income and we are going to use a REMA, okay? So just copy this command, highlight them all, highlight them all, uh, right click your mouse, copy, and then go to this one here, Control C, Control V, you paste, okay? So Control C, Control V to save you some time. Okay, see the computer automatically give us the, uh, the output and the computer automatically say, we need to use ARIMA 102. Remember what is one represent? One represent YT have something to do with YT minus one. This zero represent no difference. 
and this two represent the error term uh, has um, two moving averages. So the in R, it will give you the parameter estimate. So remember this one is the AR part, okay? Out of regression, and this two is a, a moving average. We have, because it is two, we have MA1, we have MA2, okay? So now I'm going to go slow for this uh, model. So remember this data, what we are going to do with this data. We want to set up an equation. In this equation, consumption is Y, dependent variable Y, income is X, and we allow a RIMA error. Okay, so now I'm going to um, explain this output. How do we, based on this output, write down an equation? Okay, I'll try to make this bigger. You need to now, if I give you the output here in the final exam, you need to know how to write down equation. Okay, you do not need to know how to run R just two weeks, but you need to understand. I gave you this output, what is the equation? Okay, now this is the point I'm going to turn to. I try to maximize my window so that you have, a, okay. Hope you can see it clearly. Unfortunately, I cannot use my pen because this is a, I could, um, but I will just use my mouse. Okay, what we want to do, we want to set up Y, Y is a consumption, relationship between Y and X. X is income, so this is our equation based on this model. And where do we get 0 0.99 here? The intercept, intercept is the, like the, the intercept, okay? So 0 0.599 is here. Um, the X regression, this 0 0.2028 is the slope. So 0 0.203, okay? So it is like we were familiar with from your high school, Y equal to B0 plus B1X. Y equal to B0 plus B1X, but we use different notation for those constant, okay? And then plus eta T. What does eta t looks like? Eta t has something to do with eta t minus one. There's a parameter. Where this parameter come from? From AR1. Do you see AR1? And then eta t has something to do with eta uh, epsilon. Epsilon t minus one, epsilon t minus two. And there is a constant of parameter here. So the fourth parameter, coming from here, MA1, negative 0 0.5758. This 0 0.198 coming from here, MA2 coefficient, okay? And this model give you the model criteria AIC, okay? Uh, criteria and the BIC criteria. There is also another criteria, AICC. What is the difference between AIC and AICC? It is, looks like what is the difference between R, uh, R square and adjusted R square. Just remember AIC is the first order. AICC is the second order. AICC usually is bigger than AIC. So this could be a multiple choice question for final exam. I'll give you which is AICC. The bigger one is AICC. Usually it's bigger than AIC, okay? Uh, the beauty of using R is that it automatically fit the ARIMA model. Remember when we use SGSS, we have to propose uh, several models, two or three models, and pick the best one based on maybe BIC criteria. 
and this one automatically give you this model. See, you didn't tell the R one zero two. You didn't tell R. R automatically give you one zero two arima one zero two. Okay, so your task based on this output, write down this equation. Any questions? How to based on output, write down the equation. All right, so now let's move on to next slide. We fit the model, we explained um, that one and this one, we can create um, a plot. We can create a plot. So um, do I have this? Yes, uh, the command is here, very long. You can just copy this one. Okay, so from here, it is copy and paste, so C combined. This is the command, right click your mouse. Uh, I don't have copy option, so I will just use control C, control C. And then I will go to this command here, control V. What I try to do, I want to create a, a plot, residue plot. It takes some time. Looks like nothing happened. Uh, I need to go back to my this is um, because I'm using copy and paste, maybe sometimes you know the format, even the space. Uh, will cause a problem. What I'm trying to do, I try to open my Word document, second a Word document. This is about this tip, second problems, second text, try to this. Um, so this is the one I try to use. Maybe I will copy from here. Hope we'll get the result copy. And then you can manually type in, okay? If then I go to the R, control V. So this time it works. It is just a formatting problem. The same command I copy from Word, it works, okay? Um, so what does this graph telling you? It has uh, the regression, uh, remember the model. The model have two parts. One is regression, the other is a Riemann error. Okay, the model has two parts. So this is the regression error. And this part is the arima error. Okay. So two chart in one command. And there's a percent sign here. It is just um, when you have in R, just try to explain something here. So this is my, so if you have percent, percent means take the one before this is the input and put the result here, output. So that is the, we call uh, output pipe, okay? This percentage in R. So for example, the normally we say yx, 
If you use this percent x percent then y, take x as input, then put the result in y. It is the same as this. You can, okay, similar meaning as this. That is the the pipe. So that is uh, the residue uh, plot looks pretty good. Okay. Um, so we get this residue plot. Um, and another way you can, we can check the residues from our model fit. So you can just type in check residues for the model. Okay, so this is a simple command. I can just manually. So the idea here is, look at here. Did you see FIT fit? This is the model. What model? A RIMA model. What exactly of this model? Remember, mathematically, this model like this. Here, this is the model. This is the model. And this model has a name. The name is FIT. You can give it any name, but we just choose to give it FIT. Once you have this model, what can you do with this model? You can check the residue of this model. So the command is check residues and then model name, okay. Check residues. And when you press enter key, it will give you, remember in SPSS, we have to create this ACF, okay? So this is the graph of the residue for this model, regression with ARIMA 102. Okay, looks like the ACF within upper limit, lower limit, and the residue normally distributed. So this is a, a good model we can use as a, a prediction, as forecast. Okay. So this is the regression with ARIMA errors. Okay. And then how do we do the forecast? We set up a model, model name is fit. We check the residue, residue is good. Now we do the forecast. Okay, um, we do the forecast. We are going to forecast for next eight quarters. By the way, this is a, the original data is quarterly data. Okay, uh, so I will just, um, the R will use a command forecast. Okay, forecast for what? Based on fit model. Okay, and we are going to forecast for eight quarters. Eight quarters. What is my X? X is in the second column, second column of our original data. Remember our original data, first column is consumption, second column is income. So income will be our X. We forecast for eight quarters. Okay, so uh, I will just try to copy and paste this command. I don't have copy option, I will just control C. Control C and go to here, control V. Hope it will work. Did I? Looks like didn't copy and paste. I'll try to do it again. Want to, it won't allow me copy, select home, 
copy and then go to the command. Control V, paste, press enter. Okay, great, it works. Copy and paste works, okay? Okay, uh, we did the forecast. See, this is how forecast looks like in the graphic representation. Okay. So those are the forecasts in this part. Those are original data, original data. This is the forecast. But how do we see the forecast in number? This is the graph. To see the forecast in number, you have to do this. You type in view F cast. Remember the forecast result we put into the variable F cast. So you type in view, case sensitive V is capitalized. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to type in all directly copy and paste view F cast. Copy. Oh, by the way, this part, the textbook do not have. This is advantage you attend live class, okay? The textbook does not tell you how to do, uh, see those eight quarters forecast value. They just give you the graph. Okay? So control V, um, it didn't register, control V. So I'm copy, right click my mouse, copy, and then paste. Okay, this time it work, view, as cast. Um, so this, the result is actually here, but still not very clear, but it is actually here. Those are the forecast value. But how do we see clearly? Um, and again, this, the textbook does not provide this command. This is, I figured out myself. I want to see specifically those numbers here. So again, you type in this, copy, um, go to home, copy, and then paste. Press enter. See, you see, uh, but we are forecasting eight quarters. How do I see eight quarters here? The, we forecasting eight numbers. This is the first number, 0 0.78.44. The second number is here, 0 0.786095. The third forecast number, 0 0.77, etc. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the eight numbers we forecast. Okay, any questions? So, so far, what we have done, we use R to set up a model. How do we set up a model? You just issue a command. Remember the fit command. Try to log it that. See, this is the model we ask R to set up for us. FIT fit. Use actually the command is auto arima. Auto arima. Use US change data. Consumption is my Y. X is uh, income is my X. So please set up a module based on Y consumption, X income. Okay, so this is the computer gave you the model. It does not, didn't give you the model, but give you the coefficient. You need to write down this model based on this coefficient. I showed you the power point slide. Once you have this model, does this model fit? You create a graph to examine. And then you check the residues, both the graph and the residues suggest this is a good model. Now you do the forecast, use the forecast command, use the forecast and see the forecast result, both 
in graphic here and in the number here. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, uh, shall we take a second break? After break, we will continue. We just finished 10 slides. Total, I have 34 slides. Hope we can finish uh, after we come back. Okay, so 10 minutes break, come back at 8.45. 10 minutes break, I'm going to stop recording.